previously on Vagabonds. I mean, this is the future, so they've got to have, like, pretty portable flamethrowers, right? Jane is in her bunk, and she has a black book that looks kind of like a religious tomb, and on the spine is written the children's book of the dead, and on the last page is a whole bunch of names that are handwritten, and some of which are crossed out. She's uh, trying to help Father Sky rebrand a little bit. People find his current statue a little bit dour and intimidating. Some people have even said threatening. But uh, At the top of the canvas, you see the word vagabond, and then sort of in the middle is just a splotch of black ink. Oh, shit. Bo, do you know what this is? So you successfully punch him in the face. He just kind of looks at you and picks up his hat, and he goes, Well, now it's personal and business. You're nothing without your crew, Molly. Did you know Donatello was overrated? He was the one that did machines. He was always my favorite turtle. Welcome again to the role Let's Taken. I am here with my three anime rivals. Hi, I'm Mike. I play Bo. I'm considerably less sick than last time. And I wanted to say something funnier than that, but I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan, and I play I.O. Jewel. Uh, cool. Yeah, great. Hi, I'm Perry, and I play Jane. Great. So... Last time we all hung out, you guys were at the starting line of a race. Uh, I was going to backtrack for like one second to say that Bo got some medical attention, which is why he's feeling a little bit better today than he was yesterday. In yeah, the... I got like steroids or something. It's But like medical Legal steroids, yes. not like shark testosterone. Not getting water. like swole, bro? No. <laughs> <laughs> shark testosterone? Fair enough. I don't. That's a thing, right? I think I may Is have it? stolen that from Grand Theft Auto Four. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Sounds All of right. my medical knowledge comes from video games. Oh yeah. We also forgot because we talked a lot about it. I don't know two episodes ago about betting. Uh, you guys did not place any bets. I think when you say we talked about it, it was mostly Megan. Fair. It might have also mostly been me as the NPC. I'm not placing any bets. No bets? What? I have no really? faith in us, or, you know. <laughs> I mean, you could bet on one of the other racers, too. No, I don't want to do that either, because that's just cruel. That's fair. I'm just saying, the uh, the guys in that solar ship are at ten to one odds. Jane is basically a priest. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure. And they're giving you guys Gambling's four to one odds. not on her roster. I think what's going to happen is that at the end of this, we're not, we're not going to have placed any bets, and Graham's going to be like, well, Pixel... Bet on you to win at like fifty to one odds, and now you're millionaires. No, no, Pixel is a millionaire. Yeah. Oh, well, Pixel. Yeah, Pixel but... handles handles their own finances. We'll be kept crew. <laughs> In some ways, you guys are. Pixel can hire a better crew. <laughs> As they've always dreamed. These are my these are my three human pets. <laughs> and my electric sheep. I don't think my odds are good if Pixel is in charge. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to mention I have adapted this scenario from a prompt that the Monocle Society put out through their Discord uh, just before the Geek and Sundry show called Weave Society came out. They started releasing things through a program they were calling Weave Society, uh, oh. and this race scenario was one of the ones they put out for Solar Age, so I kind of took some ideas from it and wanted to make sure they gave them credit. So we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna start by explaining the rules for the race. Um, so space, the solar system is kind of divided into the seven kingdoms plus the two belts. At the beginning of entering each of those belts, I'm gonna have you guys make a check to find out kind of where you guys stack up in the rankings. We're gonna have an engine check, which we're gonna represent with stones, a navigation check that we're gonna represent with flames, and a perception check that we will represent as usual with gales. Uh, you guys can also, if you want, swap one of those out to uh, make a taunt instead, taunting one of your opponents to... They'll probably attack you, but they will lose lose a little bit on their roll. I'm going to be rolling d6s for all of the other guys. 
I may switch that up because I realize it does give them a bit of a house <laughs> a disadvantage. These are house rules. I'm kind of making them up as I go along to a certain extent. <laughs> Uh, you guys also have the option to take the get gate network, but as you may recall, the gate network is fluctuating right now. So if you choose to do that, uh, one of you gets to roll a, uh, one of the weave dice on a weave or a brooks. It's working fine. On a strike, you get sort of dropped out of it. You lose your payment, but you don't get across the system. And anything else is just out of commission at the moment. I thought that you needed some kind of special card to use the gate system. That's to travel for free. Yep. Oh, I thought it was to travel at all. No. Nope. Gates always cost oh. 50 credits. So they're not super expensive, but they're not super cheap either. Right. Anything anybody wants to have gotten done before you were at the starting line? Um, Just to confirm, any of the new items that we bought for the ship we have, correct? Yes, you have installed, what was it, shields and... Shields, yeah. We got a repair drone. And a repair drone. Okay. Yes. And then Bo bought a flamethrower. And Bo bought also, a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, I was very selfish. But how much would it cost to get some sweet flame decals, like, painted onto the ship? No. Because <laughs> everyone knows the Absolutely more flames, not. the faster nope. it goes. No. <laughs> um, those would probably run you 200 but you also have to convince Pixel which would be a Brooks check I don't want to do that because if we do that we have to rename the ship Guy Fieri <laughs> is the S. end Guy of Fieri. this race Flavor Town because we will be <laughs> nope <laughs> the destination is uh, Sedna or 90377 Sedna as we currently know it it's one of the furthest out objects in the solar system now AKA known as flavor town <laughs> <laughs> awesome. it's too late Graham. it's canon now fair enough i was gonna say it's a little ironic considering it's sort of common knowledge that this is actually a colony for escaped ais who have oh. no taste buds <laughs> well, that's so, so it's like an ironic nickname uh so you guys were on the starting line next to the other racers ships the revenge captained by the self-styled dread pirate moloch the pack rat uh captained by todd gonzalez the merchant the peregrine by mercenary willie dustus the panjandrum which is captained by ray mcscriff the Macra Sprinter, which is Raul Chamberlain's ship, and the Amaterasu, which is run by Brother Anatole Luz and a group of Coronite monks. I've got a list in front of me, which is how I remember these things. Uh, Hargandane is counting down to the start of the race. So if you guys would like to, go ahead and make your rolls. Um, are we doing the initial three die? I think it depends on who's doing what. I figure, you know, because I think you guys have all got skills that would give you an extra dice if you configure yourselves correctly. True. Well, you said the engine check is stones, right? So that should be me, because that's my focus suit. Right. And I'm navigation, because I'm a navigator. Yep. Um, what is what is Gale's? Uh, that's the perception. Okay. So that's so to I make guess, sure that you, like, hit stuff and stuff. I guess I'll roll for that. What's mine, Flames? No, you were, I thought you were Gales as well. Your focus suit is Gales, Didn't we yeah. smurf that up? Yeah. We did a little bit. Oh, no. I only got one. It was Flames, right? You said Flames? Yeah. For navigation? Yes. That's some hairy garbage, by the way, but you're the DM. What was? Jesus Christ. It wasn't me, because I don't have dice. I have to use the magic of roll 20. All right. Um, I got uh, uh, two gale and a weave, and the I rolled the weave, and it was another gale. Okay. I'm going to ship you an ashtray, Megan. <laughs> I have. <laughs> no, no, I'm using the, the weave box top to roll my dice in, but I miss, so, you know. Sorry, how many did you get, Bo? Three. Three? Okay. So I think between three of you, you guys actually, I think, are coming out on top. Because uh, everyone else did okay. 
I also gave them, like, bonuses and stuff. So let me just finish entering them. This Did is, you course, give us bonuses and stuff? <laughs> you guys have kind of a crazy advantage because you could go up to 12 plus, and oh, they all get you know. D6s. You guys are kind of neck and neck with the Peregrine. The Macro Sprinter is out front because, of course, he's the uh, experienced racer. Right behind you is the Revenge with Moloch. Then the Packrat and Panjandrum are at the end, and the Amaterasu is chugging, chugging along because it is powered purely by solar power, unlike you guys who've got, I don't know, some crazy space fusion engine going on. Hamsters. Space hamsters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our ship constantly smells like cedar chips. That's very charming, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you guys are... It's a short distance between Mercury and Venus. So that's where you are all starting. I'm trying to think of anything else exciting that's going to happen here. Do you just have a clear and pleasant travel? This is really thrilling, isn't it? <laughs> so exciting! <laughs> <laughs> we have done not a ton of rolls, so we're going to make up for that with these next few episodes. Is this going to be a roll-heavy episode? All rolls. Because we're entering a uh, Venusian space. So, perception and all of your other checks. Okay. Promise this will get more exciting. <laughs> I got one again. I got two. I struck out hard. Oh, all right. You're the engine guy, aren't you? <laughs> Fuck. Listen, I rolled three strikes and a gales. Yikes. That's poopy. Yeah. I rolled uh, three brooks and a flames. <laughs> I guess I'll just clarify. I think Jane would be in the cockpit for this. Yeah, I had sort of figured... So, I feel like you just hear a muffled explosion from the engine room. <laughs> I, do I have a comm yet? No. Oh yeah, we, we, no, we gave you one Damn for the it. party. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I just didn't use it. Okay. <laughs> well, we didn't really have to. You were too busy talking about art. Okay. To ghosts, and mostly. Letting me piss off the dread pirate even more. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, so the Dread Pirate actually makes uh, makes a trip past you and is going to take a quick pot shot as you as he goes past, because um, he is trying to kill you guys as well. What a dick. I know, right? I yell that over the comm system to him. <laughs> there is no response. So he is going to make his attack. Uh, would you guys like to try and dodge? Do you want to fire back? What do you want to do? What, uh, what would we roll to dodge? Uh, dodge would be gales. Uh, counterattack, I think, would be stones. Guys, I feel like it's all moot since I literally exploded the engines. <laughs> he is taking that opportunity while your engines are, I wouldn't say down, but they, like... Aren't working full capacity. It's like when you're driving a manual car and you fuck up the gears, <laughs> it's like... Grr, grr, ah. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Bad sound. <laughs> I I feel like we should dodge at this point. It, it just seems too early to start throwing. Throwing. But he's trying. He is legitimately trying to kill us. That's true. We do have a hit out on us. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. Let's take the aggressive route. We attack. So yeah, you hear uh, like a muffled explosion from the engine room, and then did did he hit us, Graham? Um, he or, is... No, we haven't decided that yet. Okay, never mind. Yeah, you've basically got like a like a warning light, like you're being targeted. Um, do you want me to roll? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's going on. Like I don't. Oh yeah, you're I'm not, you're down. I can't you're down actually below. Like, see the race. Okay, I'll roll. Um, would my uh, experience with being a privateer help at all? Like, would that give me any benefit? I, I do naturally take to being a pirate. Right. I'm gonna say that will give you. Yeah, that'll give you an extra dice. Okay. Um, and you cave so easy. I don't think we've ever asked for advantage from you and not received it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a pirate. He's going to be, you know, attacking with, like, the standard pirate attack movement. You are trying to hit a two or better. Okay. And what am I, what suit would it be for attacking? Uh, stones for attacking. 
Stones, okay. And the other thing is, like, you guys are going to wind up with a hit on your ship either way, unless okay. you get, like, a, I'd say, an epic success, so three weeks. A weaves. decent, okay. Three or, three or more. Three or more. On the attack, or are we also dodging? You are, I think, just just uh, counterattacking. What was I rolling again? Stones. 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 Um, I got one. <laughs> okay. So you fire back and just oh, shoot so wide. With it. With it. And actually, this is part of the reason I think that the engines, like, skip a beat, is that you guys got attacked by the revenge, which slowed you down. Okay. Because of your shields, you have four strikes for the ship, uh, which you can... Like repair, I think over the course of a couple of things with the repair drums. Okay. Yeah, that was. Let's see, what would, what did you get for perception again on this check? Do you recall? Me, um, I think it was two. Okay, um, so you do get a ping on the radar that is sort of somebody trying to like make a friendly communication that you are welcome to check in with him as you pass. Sure. I, I guess I'll, I'll welcome that communication. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? I don't actually have a name for this guy. Hold on. Bob Ross. That is a weird <laughs> Bob name. Bob Ross. <laughs> Ross. Ross Bobs. Bobson. <laughs> Ross Bobson. So Ross Bobson pings you guys and explains that he's actually looking for somebody to help him out. He's building like a warp gate network of his own he's trying to compete with the trade guild and he's hoping that somebody passing through might be interested in trying out one of his prototypes oh shit we're a little busy <laughs> but this could be beneficial if it works i can i ask a, can i i would like to roll a perception on the signal that came in and try to determine if it was like from an 800 number <laughs> <laughs> it's a robocall <laughs> A political a robocall? Yeah, yes, you can do that. Motherfucker. Nothing. Nothing. No strikes, but I also did not get gales. <laughs> I am like balls. Can I trade dice with you? Yeah. This is bullshit. I want different dice. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, back in the throne room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Alright, I'm gonna try these ones. You can't roll again. You already failed I'm your not, role. I did already fail my role, but perhaps I won't fail the next one. <laughs> I mean, as far as you can tell, this you know, there's a guy on the radar in a ship out near the sort of uh, border of Venus and Earth. So as far as you can tell, it seems legit. So, uh, Bo, there's a Ross Bobson on the comms. Uh, he wants us to test some kind of warp gate. I don't know if it's legit or not. What do you think? All you hear is the sound of, like, a fire extinguisher being sprayed, and like, <laughs> Jesus, motherfucker, did, hold on, did we just get shot at? Um, what is happening out there? No, nothing, nothing. You sound so convincing. Thanks. I've been practicing. I was... <laughs> I've been practicing! Okay, what was the question? So we have a, a guy on the comms, he's, he's offering to let us test a, a warp gate? I don't know, something about trying to compete with the trade guild. Uh-huh. It, it might benefit I us. think he's totally legit. He seems super legit. Like, all the legit. <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm starting to doubt this decision. No, man, I use, like, my very good, like, intuitions, and they tell me that he's legit. Yeah, why don't you go back to talking to your spirits, Jane? What are you talking about? Nothing. Oh, there's nobody dead here. I only do that for the bereaved. The, oh. Oh, okay. A anyway, Bo, what are your thoughts? We need to make a decision quick. Well, my thoughts are I may have just fucked up the engines, so if we could get an advantage, we might want to try it. All right, I, I guess we give this guy a, a shot. I mean, his, his name is, is Ross Bobson. How bad can he be? I got a good feeling. <laughs> so does Jane. And I'm usually, you know, not partial to going with her choice but whatever <laughs> so i'm an excellent judge of character <laughs> we'll see being of such good character myself <laughs> and i mean you obviously joined our crew so you know can't go wrong i think you guys seem like swell people <laughs> very up and up reputable super reputable 
So, anyway, uh, yeah, Mr. Bobson, can you send us your coordinates? Uh, we're happy to help. Yeah, he sends you over some, like, his loca- his exact location, and you fly over there without any interruptions, and you sort of see this this structure that Guy he's building. Guy with a cudgel in a back alley? <laughs> oh, sorry. A space back alley. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, he's got his, uh, his device, which you look at, it's definitely not as polished looking as the gates, but it does kind of look like a gate, uh, and he's explaining technical nonsense, you know, technical jargon about how it's, you know, runs on a different system, it uses warp technology or something like that. Um, I don't think any of you really understand it, because none of you are really, like, scientists in that, like, physicists. And then he explains, yeah, you just... Uh, if if all is going according to plan, this should drop you in uh, Martian space. So you basically get to skip Earth. You know, this better not bite us in the ass, because if it does, I'm coming back here and personally destroying this and finding you. <laughs> he sort of looks worried and he goes, uh, yeah, head on through whenever you're ready. <laughs> uh, the confidence. <laughs> So just uh, yeah, it's gonna be a flames roll. None of yeah, it is nobody's strong suit. So it's just gonna be straight up. It's basically if you guys get an epic success, you skip it. If not, you get bumped ahead. I'm gonna add six to your uh, your roll from earlier. Do do you do you want me to roll since I've had the most success so far, or (laughs) (laughs) sure, or assume that you're due for a failure? Well, that's that's when I got the one and, and whiffed the shot. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm down with that. That's fine. Cool. All right, fair enough. So three then. Uh, two. Two. All right. So yeah, you guys um, pass through, and he's communicating with you. He's like, everything's looking great. There's no problems. Everything's awesome on my end. And then at the end, he goes, oh. All right, everything's fine, but you are going to be dropped out um, by the dead Earth moon and not Mars, as I had promised. I apologize for that, but thank you so much for the help. This data is incredibly useful, uh, you know, and then you kind of lose touch with him. Mother cookie! Oh, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> good enough. Um, but you guys I mean, are now in the lead. It's it's pretty good, right? We, we got to jump. Um... And I think is what was that sound? The engine, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to start, I think, uh, yeah, we are now in the space around Dead Earth. I'm going to make my checks for everyone else. Should we do ours too? Yes. Make not? your checks. I'll make a check. I got three and a strike. So three flames. Three flames, damn. I am navigating like a, like a... a Garmin. Just call me Garmin. <laughs> I had uh, two weaves. I had one stones. Okay. So you guys are actually doing awesome. Uh, you guys are still out front. Um, and you do have the revenge is again behind you. He uh, is going to take an opportunity to kind of go around as you're sort of flying between through the Earth space. You kind of go one side of the moon. He's kind of going the other side. And as soon as uh, you guys kind of come around, he's actually aiming again, taking another shot at you. Is he behind us? He's sort of, yeah, behind you. Is there any way I can just like, like eject all of our garbage, like whatever kind of waste we have, (laughs) like into his face? sick of his shit, man. <laughs> yes, and I think that actually gives him a disadvantage on his attack roll. Because um, suddenly there's I a roll? bunch of debris. I don't think you have to roll anything. I think that's... that's basically, I'm just super clever and I win. Awesome. That's a, a, like an attack that you can do one time. But you also, again, have... I release all the garbage. <laughs> just like... So that's, you know, all the waste, all the, like, uneaten... Algae. Uneaten algae... The stuff for, like, all the everything just kind of ejects out the one side and kind of... Dr. Parsnip's litter. Yep. (laughs) I guess in space no one can hear you fart, right? (laughs) Is that how it works? Yes, that is. 
Um, so he is going to take a shot, and he... Alright, so that's a one, if you do you guys want to counterattack or uh, dodge. Uh, I say we try to dodge this time. Okay. Does anyone else want to roll, or... What suit is that? That would be Gale's. I, again, I don't really know what's going on, so I'm counting on, like, your best judgment. I take it you're rolling, Perry? Fuck! I shouldn't have. Bo, you just hear, like, the, like, waste system just, like, kick on for a second, and then, (laughs) like, I don't know, just, like, a squelching noise as, like, a tube clears. Like, that's a really weird time for... I'm not gonna ask questions. (laughs) (laughs) Don't question it, Bo. Uh, how'd you do there, Jane? I did roll bad. I didn't get any strikes, but I I got two flames and two brooks. Okay. So yeah, I think despite that, he does actually hit you guys again, but like, it's sort of like a glancing blow. Uh, so you guys are gonna take another strike for that. So you have two strikes left, um, I think. Okay, we are clearly being shot at. What is going on? Nothing, Bo. Nothing to worry about. Don't worry your pretty little head about it. <laughs> <clears throat> we just, <laughs> we hey, just did that uh, like in Pixel, harmony. what is going on? Uh, the... Pixel, tell him nothing. <laughs> Pixel just immediately <laughs> so <it> goes quiet. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? What? And then yeah, after a couple minutes... Because none of this is suspicious. After a couple minutes, um, Pixel kicks on, like, just to where you are, Bo, and goes, <laughs> We are being attacked by the pirate ship Revenge. Oh, yeah, they're the ones that want to kill us. I guess that makes sense. Correct. Uh, it's Welcome not going well, is it? We got fun and games! <laughs> we have not avoided two of their attacks. I would oh, like to good. point out that any time I sing, it's actually Jane. <laughs> Um, do the repair drones just do their thing on their own, or do we need to send them out? I was assuming you guys had already sent them out when we okay. mentioned them last time, but... Yeah, no, that's technically, fine Technically, yes. Uh, and I think basically on the next... I think once you guys hit the belt, the first uh, it'll have repaired the damage for the first uh, attack. Okay. We don't have to roll for it? I hadn't thought about that. Don't ask that question. <laughs> I would say, yeah, I'd make it probably an easy, a relatively easy one. I'm trying to decide whether it would be flames or just brooks for the hell of it. I think probably a flames check would do it, <laughs> um, which we will do after the uh, after we get to Mars. So, I thought you were going to say, like, after this After this for word from our sponsors, <laughs> which we don't have yet. <laughs> By the way, if anyone wants to sponsor us... Buy algae additives. No. Mm. Two gale. Uh, Gales. Two flames. One stones. Oh, wait, hang on. I got a, a weave. Let me reroll that. <laughs> you guys are neck and neck with the revenge, which is interesting. <laughs> F those guys. Um, But he is actually not going to take an attack, an opportunity to attack. He's just going to kind of focus on getting forward this time around. I think we should attack him. He's right there, right? He is right there. Can I, can I roll to attack? Like, because I have the best accuracy? Yeah. 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 Go for okay. it. So I think, yeah, you kind of get the, the engine is humming smoothly, so you kind of run out to wherever the guns are on the ship. All right, hang on. I have to mute my microphone when I roll, because otherwise it'll just blow everyone up, blow <laughs> up everyone's ears. <laughs> tappity, 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 tappity. Is that uh, the sound that's effect my, for... That's, that's All right, I got... I got one flames. Okay. Oh, that would be sto- uh, stones. Oh, well then I failed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I struck out, actually. You did strike out. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think while you guys are focusing on the aiming at the revenge, you kind of miss a piece of space debris, which uh, doesn't Shit. hit the ship and damage the ship, but it does kind of you know, knock it for a second, which kind of throws Bo to the floor out of the out of the system or out of the, out of the, the chair, uh, injuring his elbow. Ow, my elbow. So you take a strike. 
I think I have two strikes and oh, those I think reset really, overnight. That's really bad. Those reset overnight um, before the race started. No, but I. Sh oh, oh, the earlier strike was not a personal strike. Yeah, that was a, yeah. that was just uh just really to set your race order. So yeah, I'm not taking. I'm not counting strikes in the race order. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> I'm just making this up as I go along, 100%. Um, so the other thing that you notice as you are passing through the Martian space is that there are naval training exercises happening kind of, you know, in some of the expanse uh, just near the planet. Um, but you guys did a pretty solid uh, navigation and agility, or in perception check. So you shouldn't really have any problem kind of going through... Let's see if you guys do one more perception check. See if you get a like a bonus for kind of flying through. Yeah, I'll I'll do it. I'm gonna actually say dexterity check rather than perception, but it's the same suit. Uh, one. One. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna give you a bonus for that. <laughs> but you guys are still kind of neck and neck with the revenge, um, which is not intentional. It's just how he's rolling. Uh, and you are now entering the belt space. Uh, so the asteroid belt. It is not, you know, people fly through this all the time. It is not too, too hard to uh, navigate. Um, but we'll do another check. However, uh, at this point, the Panjandrum is going to try and go through the gate and fails. So instead of a roll, they're going to stay at their current position in the Ores order. Everybody else gets to roll. Are, are we all rolling? Yeah, everybody, everybody okay. roll. Dang. Whoops! I fail. Oh wait, no, it's it's. What is it? Oh, it's flames, right? Uh, year flames, yeah. Uh, I got um a gale and then two weave. Okay. I didn't get any strikes, but I did definitely fail. I got two successes. Okay, so you got... Is that a total of five between the lot of you? I had three. Bo, you had two? Let's see. Kay. Yeah, so five. I can do math, I promise. All right. Um, so the revenge kind of takes a, a dive to try and avoid an asteroid that they weren't quite planning for. Dive isn't quite the right word, but they kind of go like the long way around and kind of go way off course. Okay. The Panjandrum tried to go through the gate and kind of didn't do anything, but they did lose their money. Um, and now has to kind of navigate through normally, uh, which gave the Amaterasu a chance to kind of putter forward a little bit faster. You guys are kind of between the mercenary Peregrine and the uh, merchant in the back rat. Uh, and the Macro Sprinter is again way up front. Because you guys have traveled, uh, have spent a lot of time, you know, not really sort of between the various kingdoms, you've probably spent a fair amount of time in the belt and are pretty comfortable navigating through it. Let's roll again. Thanks for joining us, guys. I know, right? <laughs> Another exciting episode. <laughs> um, did you guys want to do anything before you leave the belt space and we roll again? Um, I'm cool. All right. Do you want to do the roll to see if you repair your ship? Yeah. What are we rolling? Are... That would be flames. Who's rolling? It's my droid, so I should probably... Whoops. Okay. And it's straight up, like, if you succeed, then... Uh-oh. Oh! I got three strikes. Did you get any weaves? No, I got three. I only have three dice. Oh, shit. Wait, how many am I supposed to roll? Uh, three three right? for that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I got three strikes. Oops. Um, so yeah, it doesn't add a strike to your thing. It flies, like, through the cockpit windshield and just hits me in the head. <laughs> I would hope not, because then we're all dead. I get sucked into space. I'm gonna say that the, uh, what happens is, like, it goes out to the damaged part of the ship and tries to kick on and try to, like, figure it, but just... The droid, like, it's not sure, and kind of, you know, you get an error message, and it, you know, returns inside the ship to kind of regroup and think about it again. Do I not get a strike? I rolled three strikes. No strikes. Uh, oh, right, yeah, you also have to take a strike. Personal, just not ship strike, right? 
Yeah, a personal strike. I'm trying yeah, to personal. Trying to think of what that would look like. I just like I get up to like go over to like check the feed from the drone and I like trip on my shoelace <laughs> and just like eat shit. Just face like plant. it's one of those like falls where like you don't get your hands out fast enough and like you hit face first. No. Ow. So yeah, that's that's what happens. I like that. I might just have you guys start doing that. Like when you get a, an epic failure, just, just choose the form of your punishment. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the ship has not been repaired. You're still at two strikes, but because of the shield, you guys get basically a bonus strike. Cool. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So everybody's going to roll again. So, Amaterasu's back. Fine. The Revenge is staying put in the rankings. Paul Gonzalez moves up. One. It's a one from them. One, I got one flame. Pajandrum, Pajandrum does pretty well. And the Macris. Hey, MC. Yes. Could you take a look at roll 20 and look at my roll? Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> All right. Uh, you got a two of them. Uh... Oh, it's stones. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, you got. I got five successes. You got five successes. God damn! So that was sorry. What did you get? Uh, Io. Oh, uh, three gales. Damn! So you guys are kicking ass this time around. Yep, yep. Yeah, your familiarity with the belt kind of makes it so that you guys just kind of pass through without any, without any issue. Um, the the Panjandrum is also. Because she's hired some of the best people, uh, Ray McGriff's ship also kind of passes through, but comes out just after you guys. Um, I guess Raul is just not having a great day, and they kind of come out next after that. Uh, Revenge is coming in, you know, second from the bottom, and the Amaterasu is just kind of chugging along still. They're adorable. Cool, cool. I like those guys. <laughs> Who the fuck is Raul? Uh, Raul is the captain of the Macro Sprinter. He's the, like, professional racer whose autobiography you all thought about buying for a minute Almost last time. Almost bought. Okay. Um, Raul Chamberlain. Uh, so so wait, what, what place is he in? He's in third at the moment. Ooh. We'll write the next book. <laughs> uh, and you guys are kicking ass from that last roll, so you guys are way ahead. Um, you're passing through uh, Joby in space without really anybody to worry about at the moment. Um, let's do... I've got a couple of little events that I put in. Which is oh, wait, we have to go up. there and back? Yes. Ah, uh, shit. Um, so yeah, it's still anybody's game. You guys are less than halfway through. You're about a quarter, I think, of the way through. Okay. Um, and I think in total of time, like it's going to start taking more time to get places because the planets are further and further apart uh it's about the end of the first day of the race okay i'm assuming you guys are you know taking shifts and taking breaks actually that is a question we should probably ask is how are we going to do uh because now these races are going to be you know uh, on the order of like a day or so so how are you guys breaking up the shifts i'm still going to do one roll at the beginning of it to kind of you know the teamwork but are you guys, like, taking shifts at the wheel, or how are you guys handling that? I never sleep. Io is not going to sleep for two weeks and die. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hallucinate and die on day four. Oh, is it day four? Yeah, I'm on 100% of the time. You can take naps. Until, until I, like, fall asleep in the engine room. <laughs> All right, I'm back. When uh, yeah, when you fall asleep in the engine room, Pixel kind of brings like a like a sleeping bag and like a pillow and kind of like stretches them out over you and puts your, the pillow under your head very gently. Pixel cares. <laughs> Pixel yeah, likes to I, I keep just... their pets safe. <laughs> because when Pixel wins, <laughs> exactly. Um, I I just feel like Io wouldn't sleep unless absolutely necessary. I I would take regular shifts. Okay. <laughs> I assume. And if if Io's not taking regular shifts with me, then I'd probably do it with Pixel. Okay. So like we each get like a like a eight hour break. Okay. That works. Does Pixel even need a break? Probably not. Technically no. 
Um, I mean, they sort of take the time to kind of wander around and make sure that all the other ship systems that you guys aren't focusing right. on are still working. I think at this point, uh, the revenge, uh, Moloch is going to try and take another uh, trip through, and just the gate is not working. So he's going to drop to the end. The gate system is, is f- <laughs> really not working for these guys. Is, is there a way to send him um, his 50 credits? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please and thank you. <laughs> Through, uh, like, I don't know, space PayPal? Yeah, I, I just want to send him 50 credits with a note saying, Love the, ba- the Vagabond. <laughs> <laughs> he rejects the payment. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so everybody else is going to get to roll. And you guys are gonna get to roll. Unless, have you? Did you guys want to try and take the gate? Um, I think judging from the failure that we're seeing, I'd say it's a bad idea. That's yeah. Fair. Um. Okay. So pendulum staying. What? So how did you guys do? I got three flames. Cool. I rolled two gale. Okay. I rolled one stone. All right. So just barely, you guys are staying out front. Tiamatarasu caught up with the uh, the Peregrine. They're, you know, first and they're tied for second at the moment. Uh, followed by the pack rat and the Panjandrum. And then at the very end, I guess Raul just, I don't know, took like a wrong turn and kind of got stuck in a, a gravity well around one of the moons or something and kind of struggled to get back. But is now uh he, he's just gonna say fuck it and quit. And <laughs> away. Not quite. It is still anybody's race. Yeah, so that's Saturn space. Uh he's going to actually at this point the revenge is gonna take another shot at you guys, but because he's so far away, sort of at the back, uh he's gonna take it with a disadvantage. Uh this is him responding to you sending the the payment. Uh, who wants to try and counter or attack? Counter or dodge? I say we dodge. Yeah. Do you, do you want me to roll? Yes, because I <laughs> suck. You're the only one of us that hasn't rolled a strike yet, in terms of personal strike. <laughs> what is that? Okay. And this is uh, Gales, right? Yes. Uh, two, two gales. All right, so this time you actually managed to dodge it. Huzzah! You see it kind of coming. Do we do a barrel roll? You do a barrel <laughs> roll. Barrel roll! And, uh, Slippy. No, not Slippy. The other one is very proud of you. <laughs> the rabbit one, <laughs> whose name is eluding me right now. Pepe. I can't Peppy. think of it. Peppy, Peppy. Yeah, Peppy. Peppy. He is very proud of you. What the fuck are you talking about? Star Fox. Star Fox. <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about. I'll go punch. <laughs> that's F, that's F zero. That's not the same oh, thing. Oh, Falcon Punch. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Oops. Well, I mean, they're all in Smash Brothers, so it's a shame. There... Anyway, I was about to say it's a shame <laughs> there hasn't been a Star Fox game in a while, but I I actually never played Star Fox Zero and heard no good things about it. So anyway, mm-hmm. oops. All right. Um. So otherwise. Nothing particularly exciting happens while you guys pass through Saturn, or is that? Can, can we look for anything of like note? Yeah, in you're... the area. Um, you are welcome to do that. I'm going to say that will be a fresh perception check because now you're not like, you know, looking in front of you to make yeah. sure you don't crash into something. That's fair. This is where I get all of the strikes. <laughs> no strikes, but nothing. Nothing good. Of benefit. No, just Brooks and Flame. Um, you notice that Saturn looks really pretty as you go past it. Aww. <laughs> Saturn always was my favorite planet when I was, like, eight. Because <laughs> it had the rings and, like, nobody else really did. Do I see my namesake in the distance? Uh, I thought... Uranus has rings. Uranus has got, like, yeah. But not as pretty. Let's roll again. I got one. I got two. So you guys got a total of four? Three. Hmm? No, yeah, four. <laughs> <laughs> Yours count. 
I forgot how to count. <laughs> okay. Um, Math is hard. Yep. All right. So the guys, um, those people who were in back last time, kind of shook it off. And you see the macro sprinter kind of zoom right past you guys. As Raul kind of figures out what he was trying to do, he kind of uses that like thing that you hear about in sci-fi movies where they use like the gravity of a planet to kind of slingshot themselves forward. He wasn't accelerating. Yeah. He, <laughs> he forgot to put his foot on the gas. <laughs> um, the revenge kind of swings past you again, but again, kind of ignores you guys, kind of shaking a little bit from the last time and just, you know, focusing on trying to get ahead. You're now tied with uh, Willie Dustus, the mercenary. Panjandrum in her home turf now kind of makes it a little bit ahead. Uh, and Packrat and Amaterasu are kind of bringing up the rear once again. Uh, at this point, though, you do see um, two ships kind of in the uh, in the distance uh, that are actually both issuing. They're both you know pinging all available ships nearby, uh, and one appears to be chasing the other. Do you um, want to open your comms, and if so, to the chaser or the chase ed? Anyone have any opinions? I mean, I'm always partial to helping the little guy. Um, that makes sense. All right, I, uh, patch us in then to the ship that's being chased. <laughs> All right. Immediately, you are met by somebody named Tracy Bryant, who uh, is just like, "Oh, thank God, you guys are somebody's here. Somebody's listening." Um, I am currently trying to escape from a Uranian police patrol. Uh, Jesus. They have accused me of crimes against Father Sky. So, uh, can you guys, you know, help a, help a buddy out? I have one simple question. Did you break the law? This is a trick question! <laughs> He's asking you a trick question! He, like, takes a deep breath. Jane doesn't say that because she doesn't know enough. Jane is quiet. I know what I want to say. <laughs> takes like a deep breath and just goes like maybe a little bit but like thought crime is is that really a crime well, i mean i commit thought crimes every day <laughs> don't we all it is i will say without a perception check it is a little bit of an excuse fuck the police <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so a harsh vote for <laughs> for fuck the police <laughs> But I mean, we can roll a perception check. <laughs> I feel like that's a good idea. <laughs> All right, I'll 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 roll. <laughs> uh, as Magma is rolling, I would like to say that we here at the roll less taken do not explicitly endorse an anti-authority standpoint. Just you know, from time to time. <laughs> but but what about when it's a, a totalitarian state like Uranus? I'm, God, I don't want to be immature about this. <laughs> I mean, I've got stuff planned for us going there, so we should probably get that out at some point. Just get uh, it out of I, our system. I got nothing. Um, so I'm going with my original standpoint of <laughs> fuck the police. So as far as you can tell, he is 100% legit. Yeah. He's innocent of all crimes. Mm-hmm, Yeah. Okay. So I've spent time on that planet, I know. <laughs> I'm like, Io, how many laws have we broken since our, uh, you know, our union? The union? Um, <laughs> Io mutes the, uh, the ship in distress. Uh, d uh, too many to count, Bo? Do we want to be basically, you know... Do we want to have six stars every time we come to this planet, if you get my meaning? <laughs> Listen, Bo, remember that time you were, like, too drunk to leave that planet, and um, I said we could never go back to Uranus for a while? No, because I was too drunk to remember. Yeah, I may or may not have taken out uh, one of the statues of Father Sky. Remember that conversation we had back at the party? and how they replaced it with a hologram. That was you. Um, it, it may, yeah, it, it, it was me. 
Okay. Pixel's so, casing uh, is standing in the corner of the cockpit, just crossing their arms and, like, glowering scowling. at you. <laughs> as much as, like, a non-expressive <laughs> robot face can scowl. I hope... I was hoping that his face was just, like, kind of like an old, like, TV, and he <laughs> would have, like, 16-bit expressions on his face. Of, like, a smiley face. <laughs> Emoji, or like, simple face. emojis. Yes. yes. Like, smile. uh, sorry. The poop yeah, like, emoji just, like, smileys. goes across. Yep. Just, like, a frowny face. <laughs> so, at this point, Bo's gonna go to, uh, the weapons, the lasers, I guess. That's our weapon, right? And uh, <laughs> he's gonna open comms up to the uh, the other ship, the chasing ship, the police ship. Yeah, and go, hey, suck a dick, dumb shits, and I'm gonna fire. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't miss. Please don't miss. Please don't miss. Uh, I'm rolling what flames, right? Yes. Or sorry, that'll be stones. Damn it, Graham. Because it's not really intellect related. But you do get four. I don't know if that's what you rolled with. Aren't you, like, it experienced is. with all weapons, though? Like, wouldn't lasers count? Do you know how hard it is to shoot in space? No, Mike. How hard is it? Tell us the science. Yeah, I've, I've never been. Judging by my <laughs> success rate, it's very difficult, because I just failed. You do get to re-roll the weave, and the weave counts towards the stones. Oh, I did roll a weave. That's right. Let me re-roll that weave. Okay, I got one success. You got one. Are you aiming to hit or aiming to, like, like a warning shot? I'm actually aiming to, like, make them veer off course. Like, aiming in front of them so they have to swerve. Or whatever the equivalent of swerving is in space. With a one, I think you can pull that off. So you should kind of shoot, like, in their path, and they kind of, like, you know, see it coming and, you know, yeah, swerve. They roll out of the way to avoid it, which kind of gets them just off course enough to give uh, this little, like, it's basically an escape pod uh, time to come up close enough to your ship to initiate, like, a docking procedure. Oh, we were taking them onto our ship? I didn't catch that part. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. He, sorry, he's asking, like, I will say, he's, do, he's coming up next and requesting docking permission. Oh, I thought we were just helping him get away from the police. <laughs> I mean, technically, we are still he helping him get away from the police. True. True. Yeah, but harboring a criminal and, like, you know, maybe accidentally tripping a cop. You're traveling with two criminals <laughs> already. <laughs> and he does come, um, Tracy comes back on the line and says, guys, uh, if you can help me out, just drop me anywhere in the Kuiper Belt and I will be good to go. You are heading to the Kuiper Belt, yeah. We are heading that way, yeah. <laughs> Might as well. Is there a way that we can, like, take the escape pod on but not actually allow him onto our ship? Like, put hold in, like, a tractor beam or something. Like a... like a leech? Like, like we're, like we're towing it, almost. Um, you did not buy a tractor beam, so you don't have that as an option. I'm trying to think. I feel like... it would probably put... Could we just shove him in the same place we shoved the scientist? You could conceivably put him in the, uh, in the brig. The makeshift brig. Probably still smells like bananas. <laughs> bananas? Or like whatever cargo we had down there. Oh it's yeah, it's just the cargo bay. Isn't yeah, it? it is the cargo bay. In my head, at least, it's like you took like a like a shipping container and just like put like a like a cell door on it, like a barred door. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I will go down to our whatever where the escape pod comes in. I guess it's like our our cargo bay. Yeah. I basically want to be down there to, like, greet him and escort him, basically, to, yeah, our prison uh, cargo thing. Okay. Get acquainted with our guest. And he doesn't he doesn't put up a fight. He, he understands. I'm like, you know, it's, uh, it's nothing personal, but I don't want people to uh, fuck with my ship, you know? I like to think that we're basically just shoving people in this the pantry <laughs> and like locking them in i mean no, there's like, like it's just like crackers and like dehydrated mashed potatoes in there no nah, i i feel like there's like a shitty bed and like 1000 year old issues of reader's digest <laughs> those are museum pieces now and some crackers and some dehydrated mashed potatoes yeah but like he can eat them 
How do you eat dehydrated mashed potatoes? You rehydrate them in your mouth yep. with saliva. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, Tr- Tracy doesn't like put up a fight or anything. He just like, yeah, no, I totally understand. Like, you guys got your own shit going on, and here I am, possibly a criminal. He sort of looks shifty when he says that. It kind of goes on in Absolutely. without putting up a fight. He says, like I said, take me to the Kuiper Belt, and we're good to go. Uh, and thank you as well, by the way. Can can we look up any um, bounties on this <laughs> this individual? <laughs> wow! Whoa, that is the height of space dickery. Holy shit! <laughs> Never said I was a nice person. <laughs> oh fuck, man! Um, that is brutal. That is cold to the bone. It really is. You, like, look at the alerts. There's, like, a bounty system out there that I think you guys have got provisional membership to. Mm Mm-hmm. But currently they have not posted anything uh, for him. Okay. But you guys did get, like, a a message when you came on that was, like, you guys attacked the law, so, like, your provisional status is a little bit iffy. (laughs) Eh. So, yeah, you guys kind of take off. The space police kind of, you know, regroup... Then they actually start chasing the escape pod because they didn't quite notice. You did it real quick. Um, and you guys are back in the race. So let's do that roll, and then if you guys want to talk to your prisoner some more, you are welcome to do so. Uh, but let's figure out who's who's where in the ra- in the ranking at the moment. So we're rolling again? We are rolling again. I got one flames and two strikes. Six. So that's one so far. How did you do IO? Two. Two. And bow. You got three so far. You're it's still going. Yeah, you're I rolling weaves. weaves. Oh, that's such a terrible thing. I know, right? Okay, I think three weaves in a row, I will give you an extra bonus plus one because that counts. So you're at seven. Um, you are guys are actually somehow managed to catch up with uh, Raul Chamberlain. As well as the revenge, you guys are actually all tied at the front. Can I shoot at the revenge? You can. Oh boy! Before he shoots okay. at you, catch him off guard. Um, and he is going to actually, yeah, you make a roll first. So, was that your roll just now? Dang! Three weaves. <laughs> oh, technically only be a three, but yeah, I, I rolled one by right, three. right. Um, An extra one, I mean. So yeah, now let's see what he does. He's going to try and dodge. Does not make the save. Takes an attack. And I open the comms and I'm like, yo, pirates in space are dumb. I think you guys also have an opportunity to try and repair one of the strikes on your ship again. Okay. What is that again? Uh, Flames. Uh, Two flames and a weave. Okay, and you re-roll the weave? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with that, you make one of the repairs, no problem. So you are back up to three strikes on the ship. Or three strikes that you can take before you're... I was panicking when you said that. Yeah. I'm like, wait. <laughs> you're up to, th- like, three ship hit points, basically. Cool. So wh- as soon as you enter Uranian space, you also get a pop-up ad on, like, the nav Ooh. thing. Because um, you are in the Tritonian conglomerate, and they are all about making money. Um, they will offer you a fast tug to rent to take your ship a little bit quicker across the system. Uh, that'll cost you 25 creds and it'll get you there. It'll actually add like a little bonus to your speed. I feel like there's like a hand job joke in there somewhere, I but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't work it out. So That's the other meaning of the phrase Tritonian fast tug. We're grownups. <laughs> I say we take the, the toe. I, I don't know about you guys. It was a pop up ad. Like <laughs> that. I don't trust pop up ads. <laughs> Does it seem legitimate? Like can. I mean, can it's I... it's got like the official Tritonian branding on it. Yeah, but anyone can doctor that bullshit. That's true. It's like going to like. Google.co instead of Google.com. Um, I'm gonna say make a flames check. I'm gonna. It's just gonna be level one though to see if you can like determine its authenticity. Determine. Uh, I just I got one success. 
Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's all you needed. That's all you needed. Uh, it seems legit. It seems legit? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Alright, let's let's take uh take that that I'm not gonna say it, never mind, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you guys actually that fast tug will give us that big dick energy. <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> And your big dick energy brings you uh, out to the Kuiper belt first. Which means um, basically the other guys don't get a chance to uh, you know, the revenge doesn't get a chance to counterattack. Everybody else is at the end. Um, so yeah, you guys are still in the lead right now. Sweet. Oh, we have to drop off our friend too, right? Yeah. Are we in the belt? You are now entering the Kuiper belt, so you can drop him off anywhere. He, Yeah, you guys can go and talk to him and see. Just going to eject him with a spacesuit. God, that's... I was actually thinking of just, like, <laughs> booting him out of the airlock. You said anywhere. Like, literally <laughs> kicking him out of the ship. <laughs> like um, a Sparta kick? So the Kuiper yeah. Belt, because it is sort of the edge, it's, you know, uh, mostly independent, like, tribal colonies, basically groups of people who've kind of moved out to the edge of space and are living together. Uh, there aren't any gates here, so you don't have that option. Um, but that also means nobody else has that option coming into the last uh, last thing. Also means that I think we'll make another check about halfway through the Kuiper Belt. And yeah, got some more random events for you here, too. Uh, do you want to deal with our prisoner slash stowaway, Bo? I mean, how would it work? Does he just get back into his escape pod and like we drop him into space? Oh, uh, you did eject, like, you kind of, not ejected, but you, like, let the space, the escape pod go off to distract the cops. So we would actually need to deliver him somewhere. Like a pit stop? Yeah, I mean, that's the, said as the midway point, which is also an opportunity to refuel and, like, make repairs. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna go down to inform and be like, hey, uh, what, Roth? No, Tracy, you're Tracy, I remember. Uh... <laughs> We are, listen, we met a lot of people today. Uh, we are in the in the belt, and we're going to be making a stop at Sedna, so I believe that's where we'll be letting you off. Okay, yeah, I can, I can work with that. All right, uh, we should be there in about, and I look at my wrist, and I'm not wearing a watch, and I'm like, <laughs> we'll be there soon. <laughs> he kind of chuckles and goes, all right, well, I appreciate the lift. Seriously, that's, uh, you know, better than the re-education camps, I guess. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know the details uh, in full, but apparently we do have some sort of history with uh, the law enforcement. Are you over just there. telling some random guy? I'm not giving him any details. I'm not like, hey, we destroyed the statue of, like, the, the leader, apparently. I'm just like, you know, we got no love lost between the law enforcement and us. And he goes, I mean, yeah, I get that. It's Being part of the resistance is, uh, is rough, too. He goes, alright, well, I appreciate the lift. It'd be kind of nice to get stretch my legs, but whatever. I just wink at him and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes back to reading the, like, ancient magazine that's in the corner of the cell. Chicken soup for the soul. It number 87. So I think you guys are far enough ahead. Let's do another round of checks, sort of the midpoint. Actually, let's first do uh, who wants to do a perception check? Um, I can do a perception check. Alright. Alright. Uh, two weave. Two weaves? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you do get a ping, but it's a little fuzzy at the moment. You guys can investigate it, or you could also probably put a pin on it and check it out on the way back. I say we stick a pin in it. Okay. And hope whatever it is isn't dead by the time we come back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are no life signs on it. it. It appears to be just like an abandoned ship. Okay. Uh, if that's cool with you guys. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We're busy. We are busy. Alright, so let's do a AFK. series of rolls. For a pirate, Moloch is apparently really bad and like, you know. Yeah, he gave space. himself that nickname. I know. I got 
one flame and two weaves. Okay. I got two successes. Two successes. So we're at five two. for you guys. Yeah, I have two successes. Okay, so that makes it seven. You guys uh, are coming into Sedna just as you see uh, Raul in the macro sprinter turning around and flying past. Um, it'll take you a couple hours uh, on Sedna. It's a pretty small, you know, celestial body. You notice basically a fairly tiny spaceport and then large expanses of nothing and then a large building a couple dozen miles away from the spaceport, which as you get closer, you realize it's sort of it looks like it was built out of parts of other ships and parts of space debris and stuff kind of mashed together, but it looks really clean, really organized. It looks really, for I guess for lack of a better word, it looks really futuristic despite also being <laughs> patchwork and put together. Uh, I'd say, Io, you probably know this given that you've traveled the system fairly expensive, extensively. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the... And expensively. And expensively. That is the home of the entity known as the Collective, which is the, um, as the artificial intelligences land on the planet, they are sometimes given the opportunity to join the Collective. They add their processing power to this sort of giant AI hive mind. Um, but there are also casings walking around the joint and like, you know, keeping things running and stuff. I uh, just look at Pixel and, and go, you know, we can leave you here. <laughs> Thinking about it. <laughs> do it you won't <laughs> and you land um you are greeted by a sort of representative of the collective uh who introduces himself as orinathes a name that he uh they say they gave themselves so they they're an ai they are an they're ai like the, yeah they're like the pirate that gave himself a nickname uh of a pirate yes <laughs> Uh, dread, dread pirate Moloch. The dread pirate Moloch. I mean, it does make a little bit more sense for an AI to name themselves because they don't technically have parents. <laughs> I guess. But they were kind of sitting and actually flipping through, and you know, a recreation of a book, like actually reading, which is something you don't often see uh, AIs doing, on account okay. of their connection to sort of the, the constant Everything. connection to the network. Yeah. <laughs> and they sort of say, "Hey." uh... Well, welcome to uh, welcome to Sedna. We're uh, we'll refuel your ship. It's an agreement that we have with the uh, with the trade guild. They sort of bring supplies out here periodically, and we host the turnaround point. So uh, yeah, free fuel and free repair or whatever. Uh, I take uh, Tracy out of the ship. I'm like, here's your stop, and I'm gonna go get a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy kind of looks at you and says, you know, again, thanks all around. I mean, uh, I actually build ships or did back on Uranus. If you guys want me to take a look, see if I can tune your engine a bit. You know, that's probably not a bad idea. I think I did a number on them when we started this whole race. It was all right. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> what I'm in for. So might as well. We kept this guy in a cell, but we're going to let him <laughs> mess around with the engine of the ship. Nobody ever said that we made good decisions. <laughs> like, I think so far the whole conceit of this has been that none of us make good decisions. That's fair. That That is fair, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do it, guys! I mean, what what does he have to gain from screwing us over, really? That's, That's true. I'm looking at it. We did save Fist him. Fist to the face. Headbutt from an angry priest. <laughs> <laughs> Are any of you sticking around to watch him make the repairs? Um, I am in where I'm in like the food court <laughs> at the at the pit stop. The space court. I'll hang out there. All right. I was gonna say Jane could stick around too. You can you can bore him with conversation. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I'm going to stand there while he's working and I'm going to stare at him disconcertingly just like an utter silence with no expression on my face for 15 full minutes and then go so uh anyone you know die recently? <laughs> he goes I mean yeah part of the resistance is shorter lifespan back home no. it occurs to me that that's a stupid thing to ask because if they died planets away there's not much I can do for him. Right. But he sort of is conversational, is kind of, seems a little hardened to the concept of death, so. 
It sort of it sort of goes with the territory when you're resisting the totalitarian government of Uranus. Um, I made myself really want a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a question, MC. Yes. Um, from from my my time on the planet and um, I, I feel like didn't I like run weapons for the resistance? Yeah. Would would he recognize me at all? He actually would, and that's why I was wondering if you did walk past. Yeah, I was I was hanging out there, not talking to anyone, but just mean mugging. All right, and like uh, just going through like the news or whatever. Okay, on your like phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he keeps you know like looking at you every couple of seconds, like with like a faint glimmer of recognition. Okay. And then after a minute, he goes, "Did you fly a ship?" back on Uranus at any point? I have no idea what you're talking about. Kind of looks at you and goes, "Eh, you must be someone else. Yeah, definitely someone else. (laughs) He goes, I don't know. I thought you might have been the person. Might have been them. But, uh, what up? I mean, it depends on what we're talking about. Somebody, there's like a legend among the resistance, this person. They call him the Bullfinch. Uh, after this, like, old earth bird, uh, I think they had horns. You also remember that on Uranus, the education system is not amazing. <laughs> so when he starts talking about a bird probably the size of a turkey with horns called a bullfinch, mm-hmm. that's probably more related to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's sort of the legend is that this person crashed their ship into the into the uh, fa- statue of Father Sky as, like, a defiant gesture. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't sound like me. I'm a good law-abiding citizen, my friend, but whoever did that, props to them. Hmm. Kind of now looks at you, like, smirking, and kind of goes back to his work. Doesn't say anything else (laughs) until he's done. So, on the return trip, you guys are going to get a bonus dice on your engines, because he tuned up your engine. Sweet. Awesome. And remind me of that when we get there. In the meantime, uh, Pixel's been, like, helping out and, like, chatting not really even chatting, because uh, AIs can kind of communicate wirelessly with each other. But they've been kind of working side by side and kind of repairing Part of the, the ship. Hive mind. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Arinthes, you know, also chats with you guys if you are will if you guys want to chat with him. Then, uh, I mean, if he has anything to say, maybe I'll engage. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go out of my way to speak with him. Um, I mean, they're very polite. They. You did notice, like, the fact that they're reading, the fact that they um, they speak much less reserved than Pixel tends to. So they definitely seem, for lack of a better phrasing, they seem more human than most of the AIs you've met. But they're definitely, okay. like, in a casing, definitely a, a robot. Okay, what what is his name? Orinithes. Orinithes. That's actually okay. from the game. That's one of the, the cards that I scanned was Orinithes, oh, okay. the robot poet. Oh, um, I, I'm just going to look up from, like, whatever device I'm using to look at the news. Uh, so, uh, Arunathes, uh, what's your deal? It was me? Oh, um, I'm, like, I guess a second generation AI. Like, you know how most AIs are just kind of installed at a factory or whatever? Like, the collective kind of pieced me together from bits of their code, and so yeah, I'm something else, I guess. Like, are you more than one AI? Yeah, I'm kind of like the casing kind of looks itself over and no I'm just just me interesting how long have you been here Uh, about a year I think that's not too long no I mean it's it's long enough I've seen everything there really is on Sedna you seem to have a lot of uh, sway for only being here a year uh, I mean, I guess I'm kind of like their favorite son or child. So, you know, this this race that we're doing. Yeah. Do you have any tips or information that you can give us that, that might be helpful? Get there before everyone else does? Great. That's, that's stellar. Hey, Thanks. it's a space race. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> And I just go back to what I was doing. Um, at one point, like while you guys are kind of fiddling with the ship and all that jazz, you do hear uh, Arinathes say to Pixel, which is odd because you guys know that uh, AIs can communicate wirelessly. 
say mm -hmm. basically extend an invitation to stay and join the collective. Oh boy. And that's the end of the episode. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Perry. I just wanted to step in and say thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard, you can let us know by hitting subscribe or leaving a review. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as The Role Less Taken. That's Role spelled R-O-L-E. I also want to take a minute to thank the band E57 for the use of their song Stroke as our intro and outro music. You can find that on their album Heavy Seas and Smashing Skies, which is available on Spotify, iTunes, and most music platforms. Um, and that's it. We hope to see you next time. All right, that's 60 seconds of us <laughs> clapping and yelling. <laughs> Ooh, how did that get bumped up so high? I don't want it there. I want it, like, here. So, and I think this, I'm going to do the intro, but I'm not going to say, like, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? I'll just introduce you guys by saying, you know, I'm here with my three friends sort of thing. Cool. All right. But what if, we, what if we've got a bit? I don't have a bit, but what but if we what have if? one? Well, why why are why are we changing the intro? We're not really changing the intro. I'm just t taking out three words. Yeah, but what if people start listening on that episode? Well, then they're fucking idiots. I know. Graham finds us boring. Confirmed. <laughs> no, you guys are still going to introduce <laughs> yourselves. You're like the step parrot that's trying to win our love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great DM. <laughs> I didn't say anything about your DMing. I'm the best DM. I'm your favorite DM. I, s I said you're a cop-out step parent. <laughs> wow. That's cold. What happened to the kind stepdad that would do anything to impress us? Well, I got called out on it, and so now I'm no longer the kind stepdad. <laughs> you're not my real dad anyway. Yeah.